to visit the tunnels. Anyone who's been down below and visited the tunnels with us will always come out with a head full of questions that can't be answered. And we're the same. We've been at it for 27 years. We've been discovering tunnels. We've been emptying them out, uh, making them available for people to see. And we've been taking lots and lots of people down below. And we get bombarded with questions. Sometimes we can answer them. Many times we don't have answers. Uh, but we do the best we can. But it's, it's really quite infuriating that um, there are so many mysteries remaining that we'll, we'll never be able to uh, answer. And one little one uh, that came to mind when I was thinking about the possibility for another talk is, is this one. The mystery about lies below number 52 Mason Street, which is one of the Williamson houses. There's not really anything new in the slideshow here. You've seen them all before. <laughs> I just move them around in a different order. But um, we're looking at Mason Street as it looked in Williamson's day or soon after here. And um, there's number 44 Mason Street, the house next door to Williamson's. This one here is the, the corner of Williamson's own house. This is this is going to overlap with, with various talks I've done before, uh, which uh, a lot of you may have already seen. Uh, that picture's from the 1920s, but um, going back here to 19, uh, 1916, this is looking up Mason Street um, towards where Williamson's house is up there. And um, just in last month's talk, I spoke about this building here. This one was number 52 Mason Street. So between Joseph Williamson's house up there, 40, 42... We had numbers 44, 46, 48, 50, and 52. At this point in 1916, his house is at 54, 56, 58, and probably number 60 uh, had been demolished because this is the wall of the bridge over the railway cutting that was built there through from Edge Hill to Lime Street in uh, in the early 1880s well between 1880 and 1885 so um the williamson buildings that stood here have been demolished to make way for the railway cutting and possibly one or two on the far side of the railway cutting those of you who are here last month for my last talk will uh, maybe remember that i talked about that building number 52 mason street which by uh, 1860 had become a home for fallen women um, it was sometimes just known locally as the home or the penitentiary. Sounds more like a prison, but it was a home for fallen women with about 50 inhabitants. And uh, this was a report of a fire that occurred in that building in 1864, just four years after they occupied it as, uh, as a home. And the report, uh, when you read it uh, fully, sort of describes the building being completely gutted by fire. They couldn't stop it. Um, the wind was blowing quite hard, and by the time the fire engines got there, there was not much they can do. Uh, I didn't realise um, what might have happened to the building afterwards. hadn't really considered it, to be honest. I think maybe I assumed that the building probably had to be demolished and uh, something else rebuilt. But I've since um, uh, changed my ideas from investigations I've been able to do with help from others that um, the building didn't get destroyed. Or rather... When there's a major fire, I suppose all the internals get destroyed, wooden floors, wooden roofs, everything else collapses. But I think probably the structure, the brick structure uh, of the building remained, and it was probably um, reinstated at some later date. This plan shows um, uh, our Williamson's house site as we have it today, which takes in number 40, Williamson's house, and number 44. And then 44, 46, 48, 50, and 52 are just down the road. And as you can see there, number 52 is right up against the railway cutting. Now, that cutting is about 70, possibly even 80 feet deep as it passes through this area. But somehow or other, that building, uh, number 52, has survived. And uh, I know that in 1882, because we have the conveyancing documents, in 1882... The London and North Western Railway Company, uh, who were building the railway cutting and now owned 
what had been the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, um, by a, a um, an act of Parliament compulsorily purchased all the Williamson buildings from number 40, Williamson's house, up to, I think, number 60, or perhaps 58. And um, I think the assumption would have been that they needed to demolish those houses for the building of the railway. But uh, it turns out that they didn't. Why they bought the whole string of houses from the West Derby Wastelands Commission, I don't know. Maybe some deal was done that if they wanted to buy the few houses that lay directly above where the railway cutting was going to go, they would have to buy the lot, even though they didn't need the other buildings from number 40 onwards. Who knows? I certainly don't. This is a uh, conveyancing document that dates from 1941. You can see number 52 is there. Back corner of it butting right up against the railway wall, railway cutting wall. This plan is actually uh, to do with uh, an easement for the railway company to have access to their uh, cutting wall. They always need an easement on the other, on the, either side of their property so that they can get it for maintenance. And that's all this, this um, document is about. But it shows the building is still there, and that's um, in 1941. Going backwards again, this is a photo from the, uh, the days of the construction of the railway cutting as it goes through this part of Edge Hill. And um, this, this photograph is taken from the railway bridge that carries Mason Street over the railway cutting. And it's looking down to the next railway bridge on Smith Down Lane on the lower ground. You might have heard me talk about this thing before, that's Ramsbottom's chimney, which was designed to uh, take the fumes out of the original tunnel, which lies deep under there. They haven't got down to the tunnel yet. They're digging down to it. And this is the railway wall that has been constructed very newly uh, alongside the both sides of the railway cutting. And there is the corner, the back corner, of this same building, number 52, Mason Street. It's rather interesting that in this photograph you can see those two step lines in the brickwork of the side wall, uh, which I've identified uh, much later on. In fact, right up at 2019. I've got a set of um, RAF wartime photographs, which uh, came in very handy when we managed to find them, which help us to identify how long some of these buildings lasted and when they disappeared. Um, Mason Street runs along here. The black line is the railway, the deep railway cutting running through here. Here we have the Territorial Army barracks and the drill hall behind it. Uh, I've spoken to these places many times before and this is the buildings of Willie's Garage who took over Joseph Williamson's house and the house next door 40 to 44 Mason Street. They promptly knocked them down in 1936 and put up these garage buildings and alongside I can see them I hope you can is a set of buildings leading up to the railway cutting wall and they are number 46 48, 50, and 52. Still intact there in 1941. By August 1945, we've got the TA Barracks and Drill Hall. We've got the Williamson, uh, sorry, the Willie's Garage buildings on our land. But there next door on this triangle of land alongside the railway cutting, the Williamson houses are no longer there. So they have been pulled down sometime between 1941 and 1945. A thought that only occurred to me today, the last time I looked at this before coming on air here, was that there's a possibility that there was bomb damage during that time. Uh, we know very well that uh, lots of bombs were dropped in this area. And uh, in fact, uh, where am I? On this, on this plot of land down here, school was bombed and a plaster works were bombed and it was flattened so bombs might have fallen on some of the Williamson houses here. I haven't researched that but it's a possibility that that's why they disappeared and not because they were deliberately pulled down but uh, I certainly don't know that at the moment. Another nice aerial shot there's the uh, TA drill hall with a parade ground behind it. There's the Willie's garage set of buildings on our land 
with the steep bank behind. And behind Ramsbottom's chimney there is now what appears to be an open piece of land without the buildings, although it's not that easy to see it. And then from the opposite direction, you can now see Willie's garage there. And this is looking very much like a yard. I think it's a contractor's yard because I've been told by somebody that uh, Willie's Garage, apart from running this business where they were building uh, vehicle bodies onto chassis, they ran um, a, tr a transport company, a lorry company. And this looks as if it could be lorries parked on here. So if they decided to set up a transport business, they may very well have demolished the Williamson houses that stood on this land here opened it up and used it as a yard for their transport business. That's only a guess. And then we go forward to 1955 with this uh, last RAF photo, if, if it is an RAF photo, but it's certainly a, an old time photo. Again, we've got the, um, the barracks and drill hall. We've got Willie's garage buildings here on our land, but there now next door on that triangle, is a new factory building. Well, it was new by 1955. Uh, not quite sure when it went up. But uh, that, in fact, is the building that later became the Merseyflex factory, uh, which you can see in this photo, aerial photo from the 1990s. That is now the building that became uh, Merseyflex as we knew it, um, which stood there until 2019. And uh, Willie's garage buildings are still there, but looking quite derelict at this point. They vacated in the mid-1990s. And now moving forward to February 2019, we've got the situation where Liverpool City Council have taken over the land. Merseyflex have uh, moved on to new premises and they're in the process of demolishing the building here. And it's nearly gone. And there is one of... Um, uh, photos, Chris Isle's photo here, looking over the adjoining wall from our land into the remains of where the Merseyflex building stood. And here in this, uh, near the front corner, was a very interesting spot where we always knew that there was uh, something going on below the ground that we wanted to investigate. And um, the concrete floor of the factory had been cracking up and sagging for years. And we had the old Territorial Army plans of the tunnel network that they knew about below this land. Mason Street here, of course, this is our plot, the house site. And there under number, either number 50 or number 52 is what looks like quite a large chamber and tunnels running off around it. And even a tunnel running under the street and carrying on on the other side. We uh, have used these plans and uh, we found them to be more and more accurate than we'd ever anticipated. So in uh, 2019, we started working on Liverpool City Council to give us permission to have a dig on that land. And uh, by September, they'd agreed to it. And here we are during that week in September 2019. And we discovered this large chamber under here. Uh, there's a big hole here that's been dug out. It's about four metres deep. The, the lads standing there are right in front of the railway cutting wall. It's very close to the railway cutting. And uh, I was going to say we were lucky, but we weren't lucky. We were accurate. The, the Territorial Army plan was accurate. We found the spot absolutely precisely and found a way into this tunnel. There was a certain amount of luck involved because we dug down and found this hole quite close to the top of the roof um, as we dug across. And uh, we exposed enough there so that we could actually climb in. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, here we've got um, a Google satellite view. Uh, our site is this one here next door. This is the triangle of land and number 50 and 52 stood above here. And that's the, the deep hole that we dug uh, where we found a way into this tunnel, which runs like that inwards from the road, 13 meters long. And uh, we also dug out uh, what appeared to be a basement passageway here on the first day. Uh, and that led to a tunnel 
And we saw that tunnel and it runs right across the road there. And if you remember a previous talk I gave about Cornelius Henderson, the uh, painter friend of um, Joseph Williamson, Williamson dug a deep quarry here on this side of the road and he later built a house on top of it for Cornelius Henderson, the one he refused to use because he said it was no use as a studio. So probably why this little tunnel runs across. It joins between two Williamson properties, one on either side of the road. Uh, so there's the hole that we uh, got down to. We've opened it up a little bit just to make it big enough for head and shoulders to get through. It was quite a squirm, though. And inside, this is what we found. A wonderful chamber, 30 metres long. That's looking towards the road. That's looking back towards the rear end of it. 13 metres long and about 7 metres wide, although we couldn't be quite precise about that, with a lovely, lovely roof made from uh, stone blocks and bricks. And uh, the mystery, what I'm leading up to, is the mystery of how this chamber came to be filled with all this wonderful, bright, clean-looking sandstone waste material. Uh, to me and others, it seems absolutely positive that this chamber has been filled up with waste material from the creation of the railway cutting, which is only five metres away. I don't think there could be any other explanation. And the reason it's still so clean and red and hasn't been tarnished by the smoke of Liverpool City is because it's been sealed underground as soon as the place has been filled up and it's never seen the light of day until September 2019 when we rediscovered it. But we know that number 50 and 52 Mason Street stood above this land right up until 1941. Those buildings were obviously owned by the um, London and the North... <laughs> What's the club radio railway company called? London North West Railway Company were still the owners of uh, all those Williamson properties uh, at that point in time. This particular building, number 50, 52, might have been vacant. I don't know. But this chamber lies at least four metres below the ground level, below any basements that were under the house. And yet the railway company presumably knew of its existence and somehow opened it up to pour all this stuff down here. And I can't imagine that they would bother to do that unless it was a very deep chamber. We have no idea, of course. We know its length and its width. We can assume that it could be at least as deep as the banqueting hall under the Williamson house. It might be a lot deeper, but how could we know? What we want to do is to get in there with permission to empty it out and find out how deep it is. But if it was only a few feet deep, I can't imagine that they would bother to use it as a dumping ground. So the assumption is that it's probably a very deep chamber. And this is just a glimpse of what was going on between 1880 and 1885, right next to it. Um, this is not necessarily uh, the bit of the um, cutting that goes past this building, but it is one of the set of photos from the railway construction. And as you can see, um, this goes down 60, 70, 80 feet in the ground, uh, right down to the original railway tunnel, which is under there still. And they were taking out hundreds of thousands of tons of sandstone. And we know that they were trying to take the sandstone out in usable blocks of stone, as you can see there, as much as possible. Uh, and also, uh, they were blasting in some areas, which would have made an almighty mess. Um, but, but they were trying to get out as much usable stone as they could, because... With the railways expanding as they were, they would have had uses for stone in bridge, building bridges, tunnels, railway buildings, railway walls. And they probably could have sold as much good stone as they got out as well if they didn't need it for themselves. So um, this was how they operated. But at the same time, there must have been an enormous amount of waste, um, the small bits that can't be used for anything else. So that's why I think this chamber under the Williamson building was probably used as a convenient dumping ground because it was there and so close. The question is, how did they get it down there when the building was still there? If it had been an empty piece of ground like this, as it looks after we'd um, backfilled and um, were handing it back to the council, uh, that would have been easy, but it wasn't. Number 50 and 52 Mason Street were still standing on top of there. 
that's a little plan of the exact position of the tunnel that we discovered uh, so that we can go back there when we're getting when we get given permission and we'll be able to uh, get down either through the same hole that we created first of all or down one of the two holes that we saw which had been used to pour all this material down the other two were rather larger holes i think this one where we got in was too small to have been used for pouring the material down but uh one way or another, if we are given permission, we will be back there and we will be emptying that out and finding out just how deep it is. So uh, we're left with a mystery of how it got down there. And uh, that's really what I wanted to talk about tonight. But it's just one of so many hundreds of uh, unanswered questions that we keep finding. And there are always more questions and answers as we go on. I'm just going to throw in a few little pictures at the end just because I can, because I've got them and I thought you might find them interesting talked a lot about the um, the TA barracks and the drill hall that were built by the uh, Territorial Army on Mason Street. And this this is it. This is the barracks building. It's quite a narrow strip of a building facing onto uh, Mason Street, but a very large um, drill hall behind it. And this was built between uh, 1900 and 1903 uh, after the, um, the Territorials had demolished the Williamson buildings that stood on this land before. This remained here until um, probably about 1965, I think, so certainly mid-1960s. Uh, mid Here's a rather nice old picture from uh, 1949, uh, sorry, 1914. This one's looking up um, Mason Street towards the Paddington end. Uh, again, you've got that little squat tower of the barrack building there and the the entrance to the barracks and the drill hall is through a gateway or doorway in the in the base of the tower and just off to the left of the picture is uh, williamson's own house uh, just take note of this picture i i've had this for a number of years um among others similar from about that time and i just assumed that was the full picture going right forward to uh, the 1960s um there's the same tower and the barracks building there don't know why i threw this one in really does anybody remember those cars i think it's a bond bond three-wheeler but uh, i'm just going to finish off with this one because that is a, a i think that's a lovely thing um this is ever so clever the way uh the these old photographs can be colorized now um and I think it's really effective. It's worked very well. But basically, that is the same photo as the one I showed you there. Now, you can see this gentleman here in a suit and a hat and carrying something, which is probably paperwork. Is he a man from the Corpo? Is he a rent collector? Don't know what he is. Something official. And there's an upturned handcart and a man there sitting on his doorstep and a small child in a doorway. Look at that one. The picture was actually bigger than the one I've had all these years. I've only had this one rather more recently. But the man is still there in his suit, and there's the handcart, and the man sitting on the doorstep, and there's the small child. But the picture had been trimmed for some reason, and uh, this near bit is, is rather more interesting. All these uh, kids in 1914... Some of them barefooted, no doubt. Just thought it was a nice touch. I uh, I rather like the way this works. Colorizing these pictures has been uh, really effective. So that's about all I've got to show you. That's um, just one of the many mysteries we can't answer, and uh, we probably never will. But uh, it keeps us interested in the Williamson Tunnels, whatever. So <laughs> there you go.